All right, let's continue our exploration of the sequel series uh, with the keyword where. So where is arguably one of the more important keywords of SQL, um, and it does exactly what you would expect. So we have, before we had select something from my data, and that's where we stopped. But of course, in the real world, you want to usually have a condition. You only want things where a certain condition is true or not true, or where a set of conditions are all true, or if any of them are true. So we'll be looking at all those combinations in this video. So we'll start with the most basic where statement. So we're going to select everything from our student data. And then here's the new part where the major of the student is equal to art. And we're going to limit to the just first 20 results that come back. Now, there's a couple things to note here. Uh, notice this is a single equal. A lot of times in programming, we have double equals to check if one variable is equal to another variable or if a variable is equal to a constant. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to switch that mindset with SQL, where you just put a single equals right here. So this is basically saying, give me all of the students in my data if that student's major is art. And uh, for numerical variables, you don't have these quotes around the value you're trying to get the same thing as. But with string variables, such as major or text variables, you will have these uh, quotation marks. So if I go ahead and run this guy, I'm going to get back the first 20 results where the major of the student for all these students is art and the other variables are as they were. So to make it a little bit more complicated, we can uh, also say select just a, a certain column as we did before. So here I want to select just the GPA from the students where the major is art and give me the first 20 GPAs. So we see that matches up to this 2.9, 3.0, 2.9, 3.0. .0. So same data as before, just a single column. Now we can make it a little bit more complicated using the AND and OR keywords to combine these conditionals. So here we're saying give me everything from student data where the major is art or the major is physics. So I want to uh, collect either art majors or physics majors. So if I do that, again give me just the 20 of them that come back first, I see my major is a combination of art majors and physics majors. So probably nothing too complicated going on. Um, we can also subset and do conditions using the AND keyword. And we don't have to do it on the same column. We can do conditions, one condition on major and one condition on GPA. So this basically reads, give me everything, all the columns, from my student data, where the student's major is art and that student's GPA is above 3.0. So we want like the high performing art majors in our data set. Again, limiting to the first 20 results. So if I do that, I get art majors, and we see all these GPAs of the students that come back are above 3.0. So that's another way to use the where statement here. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Sometimes we want like an aggregate statistic on our data. Like we don't want all of the GPAs, we want some function of them. Like let's say we might want the minimum of the GPAs or the maximum of the GPAs. In this case, we're going to say, I want to get the average GPA for all non-art majors who are in their third or fourth year. So this is a little bit more complicated, right? We want to get, uh, the first thing is we want to subset on all non-art majors in their third or fourth year. Let's look at that first before looking at the averaging part. So we're going to select something, I'll explain that in a second, from our student data, where the major is not art, right? Because we want non-art majors, and the year is three or four. So it basically has to be bigger than or equal to three. So that's going to take care of our conditional part. Now. Given that I have that data, if I stop there, I would get something that looks like this back, where the major was not art and the year was either three or four. I'd get a bunch of students back. But I don't want all the individual student information. I want to aggregate their GPA. I want to get the average, the mean. So I can use this built-in AVG function in SQL. And I can say, give me the average of the GPAs that I get back from this conditional from. And then I'm going to call it AVG GPA just to give it a friendlier name. If I run that, which I have already, I get a single number back, which is just the average GPA of all of the non-art majors in their third or fourth year, which is 3.2. Now as one maybe last example, which highlights another keyword, which is like. So this is another way you can use a where statement. Here I want to get all the students whose major ends with the letters RY. So I should get just history, and I think chemistry, we'll see in this case. 
So we can use the like keyword here, which is really, really useful in the real world. So when I was software engineering, I would use the like keyword a lot when we were dealing with text data to get kind of matches to a certain um, matching string. So the way you read this is select everything from student data where the major of the student is like, and then you put a kind of matching string in here. This percent sign just says that anything can be before this. And then this RY says, I need it to end in RY. So basically you're gonna get matches on things like chemistry and uh, history, um, things like that. And I wanna limit to the first 20 results I get back. So if I do that, I get exactly what I said. I get history, I get chemistry, um, and I get the first 20 results, okay? So this is an exploration of how to use the WHERE keyword in SQL. Until next time.